Hello viewers, welcome to my Doctor Who themed YouTube channel, Who Ventures. And in this video, I'm going to show you Doctor Who Adventures magazine, issue 269, and it's dated the 17th to the 23rd of May 2012, and it's £2.60. Now, at this issue, you get a very stylish stationery set. So you get a pencil, a ruler, an eraser, and a pencil tin. And this is the cover of the magazine, and the doctor's saying, don't get all emotional, and it's got all these creatures behind it, but the Cyberman, loads of Cyberman, it's all about Cyberman. So, we have a advert for a Doctor Whale, and that's what the page looks like with Madame K on. Hello, time travellers. Right, I don't want anyone to panic. That's the important thing to remember, no panicking. It's just that a number of giant robot gorillas have been spotted heading for Earth. If you can, lure them into a trap and give me a call. I'll come armed with a huge metal banana and a net. Just don't panic. The Doctor. Mega Moment. Episode. The Wedding of River Song. Chosen by Daniel Jackson. Tell us why. Madame Cabarian was horrible to Amy and thought the silence would rescue her. Instead, they activated her eye drive and sapped her. See, that's a picture of Men of K with her eye drive. And saying, Ark. And there's also a little picture of Idris, and she's saying, Puzzles, the smell of dust after. Oh, no, that's something else. So then we have the Geronimo page. TARDIS for sale. Now you can be a mad person with a box. Exciting news if you have ever wanted to own your own TARDIS and have heaps of pocket money. The Lothian and Bordis police have put 22 police boxes up for sale. Be warned though, these ones have sloped roofs rather than flat ones, weigh over 2,000 kilograms and cannot travel in time or space. Not as good as the real thing, but how cool would it be to have one? Very cool. And Doc's saying, I'm not selling my old girl. What would you do with your TARDIS? Turn it into a greenhouse. Give it a makeover. Invent time in space travel. And there's the pictures of the TARDISes. Companions come back. Return to old home of who? Three former companions recently returned to the TARDIS. Janet Fielding, Tegan, Louise Jameson, Leela, and Katie Manning, Joe were among the Doctor Who stars appearing in a documentary about BBC Television Centre in London, where almost all Doctor Who stories were filmed in the 70s and 80s. The programme will be shown on BBC Four this month. Yay, that sounds cool. Awesome newsletter. Sign up for our cool new Doctor Who Adventures email newsletter to get more info about your fave mag and loads of cool alien facts. Visit www.dwamag.com forward slash newsletter for details on how to get started. Ten lucky readers signing up for the newsletter will be picked at random to win a Doctor Who Monster Invasion tin containing five packs of cards and a limited edition card. All you have to do to be in with a chance is sign up. TARDIS Trend Tracker Hot! We want our very own TARDIS! We keep it in our bedroom and make the sound effects to annoy everyone. Not. Don't think it's as cool as a real TARDIS though. It can't travel in time or space. Time travel hasn't been invented yet. Okay, let's just repeat. And then we have Series 7 Snippets. So, all about information about Series 7. Right. Check out our rocking episode roundup of the latest Who gossip. The one with the Daleks. What do we know? It's got Daleks in it. How do we know? Head writer Stephen Moffat borrowed a Dalek from ex showrunner Russell T. Davis, saying, We'll all look after it, except for the Doctor. We'll probably blow it up. Sorry, he does that. Too cool. The one with the creepy cowboy. What do we know? This adventure's got a cyborg cowboy in it. How do we know? It's in the trailer. The gang filmed in Spain for this episode. Now, what are the Doctor, Amy and Rory doing in a town called Mercy? 
And who is that scary creature? The one with the angels. What do we know? There are weeping angels and Rory and Amy leave. So, how do we know? Something with weeping angels in New York seemed to make sense, said Stephen Moffat. He also promises tragedy, which sounds bad for Amy and Rory. Never mind the angels, we'll be the ones reaping. The one with the robots. What do we know? Expect some big robots. How do we know? The early trailer for series 7 shows the Doctor meeting a man flanked by two huge robots. But are they the biggest thing our favourite Time Lord will face in this episode? The one with a new companion. What do we know? The Doctor meets his brand new companion. How do we know? There's been a lot of publicity about Jenna Louise Coleman joining the show in the Christmas episode. Even by the Doctor's standards, this isn't your usual boy meets girl, teases Stephen Moffat. We can't wait to meet her. And Matt Smith is saying, I think we've got some really exciting episodes. We did the read-throughs for episodes 1 and 5, and they are extremely extraordinary. Rumour alert, this, si this series will build up to the exciting 50th anniversary of Doctor Who. Expect something huge. Mark Gatiss, the writer of Night Terrors and Victory of the Daleks, will be returning to write an episode. Will a Christmas episode feature a spooky ghost? Alex Kingston has been spotted filming, so get ready for the return of River Song. See, that's that page. Now I have a puzzle of the Doctor and the Silent. Then we have My Amazing Cyber Life. Cyberman Krang keeps meeting the Doctor. 100,000 BC, my first day on Earth, guarding the Pandarka. The cyber leader says it's a good job and I'll soon get a promotion. Oh, are you? I spy my little eyes, something getting the pee. Nothing happens for the next 100,102 years, except I get a bit rusty and my arm falls off. If I had emotions, I'd cry. I took this job so I could get ahead. Then the doctor shows up. I try to natter to his friend, Amy, but it's been so long since I spoke to anyone, she thinks I'm a bit weird and scary, even when I show her my best smile. Kissy kissy. I lie on the floor until 1851, when a new cyber leader makes a whole army out of anything he can find. Cats, dogs, me. Meow. No, wait, I mean, do you? I'm still with the cyber army when we invade London 120 years later. Even have time for sightseeing. Jeez, now to buy some souvenirs. At the South Pole in 1986, I meet the first doctor. He's so old, he's in black and white. We don't get on, he blows up our planet, Mondas. I don't know about you lot, but I'm freezing. Two years later in Windsor, we try to pinch a really cool Time Lord weapon called Nemesis. Why are we posing for a picture with our enemy? Fuck. That's the uh, Sylvester McCoy Doctor. I always get my numbers mixed up. Seventh Doctor. But the Trixie Seventh Doctor uses Nemesis to blow up our cyber war fleet. He's such a spoil sport. I hide under a shot. Fool. While I hide, I miss a big battle between the Cybermen and the Daleks. Just as well, the Cybermen lose, then they all fall into the void. Wow! In 2011, I get bored and lonely, so I decide to upgrade a few shoppers into Cybermen. If this cyber suit doesn't fit me, can I take it back? That's Craig. The Doctor is a bit cross about that, and uses some secret weapons, a crying baby and love, to blow up all my new cyber friends. I lose my body and most of my head. Annoying. My head was sold to a collector in Utah, repaired and put on display. The ninth doctor visits me, once. Have you come to let me out? Doctor, wait, come back. Aww. Then the competitions in this issue, you can win a complete set of Doctor Who and Monster Invasion cards. And you can win some Lego cars sets. And in the ARG comic strip, we have one of those thingy videos that said Donna Noble has left the library. So it's one of those, I forgot what they're called. And there's a silent popping up too. 
and a Vashti Noyadi. So that's interesting. Then we have this article, Creature Feature. Monsters share their beastly best bits with us. Let me tell you why I find it. General Star, Victory of the Daleks. Let me tell you why I find this scene so glorious. Santarans have never been fans of the Doctor. He is too meek and mild. He wouldn't do so much running about if he had a probic vent in his neck. But I admit, watching him get, out, get one over at those Daleks is most satisfying. The new Daleks are born of the progenitor. They are made of pure Kala DNA. Their different colours signify different ranks. Tis, this is war, not a fashion show. This jammy dodger tied his self-destruct button move was a military biscuit triumph. It really tripped those Daleks. Commander Stark was the Centauran representative of the Alliance. He said the Daleks took all the credit for capturing the Doctor in the Pandorica until he escaped. Then it was all the Cybermen's idea. And he says, I like clones, I hate drones. Much just means, listen closely, puny humans, and I shall explain. I like the bit where the Doctor felt rage and whacked the iron side with a spanner. I always chuckle when I see Daleks destroyed, especially by their own kind, metal fools. They retreated. Come back, you carled cowards. Some tyrants would rather die than flee. And we have this page. Fear them. So terrifying that even the Doctor is scared. Daleks. My oldest and deadliest enemies are cross tin cans who want to exterminate everyone in the universe. Yikes. Weeping angels. Known as lonely assassins, weeping angels turn to stone when you look at them. So whatever you do, don't blink. Fog shark. This toothy fish ate my sonic. Now that's not a sentence you hear every day. There's one response to a flying shark. Shout, mummy, and run. Death of the doctor. I'll admit it, finding out I was going to die was a bit scary, but then I had a clever plan of how to escape. Go me. Madame Cuvarian. Villains hurting my friends doesn't just scare me, it makes me angry. You wouldn't like me when I'm angry. Pandorica Alliance. The scariest thing of all was when my, all my old enemies ganged up together to put me in a box. I didn't like that one bit. I was bored. Have faith. The Minotaur scared people so they would fall back on their faith. But what does the Doctor believe in? The Seventh Doctor once scared off some horrible haemovores by saying aloud the names of his companions. Susan, Barbara, Ian, Vicky, Stephen, Katerina, Sarah, Dodo, Ben, Polly, Jamie, Victoria, Zoe, Liz, Joe, Sarah Jane, Harry, Leela, K9, Romana, Adric, Nissa, Tegan, Tillo, Chameleon, Perry, Mal, Ace, I'm off, I know, I can smell you. So the Doctor isn't scared because he has faith in his friends. So that's our article. Then we have a poster of the fourth Doctor and a Saigon from Terror of the Saigons, 1975. So that looks awesomely cool. Then we have all about the Doctor's companions. This week, brave and clumsy unit agent Josephine Grant. Who is she? A qualified unit agent, Jo was assigned by Brigadier Lethbridge Stewart to help the third doctor who was stranded on Earth by the Time Lords. After the TARDIS, Jo travelled the world having wild adventures. She has seven children and twelve grandchildren with another on the way. In 2010 she met up with the doctor again. How she left? Joe married clever Professor Clifford Jones and went with him on an expedition to the Amazon. Did you know Joe's first episode was also the first time we met the evil master? The last words, but that's us. And the comic strip in this issue is called Dummy Run. Then you have the subscription page. And the thing you made jellyfish thing is saying you will experience a tingling sensation. Then we have all about how they designed the new Cyberman. 
for all the data on these metal monsters. 1967. The original Cybermats ran on radio control or were pulled along on wires. 1975. This large Cybermat was also pulled on wires or in close-ups it, close it worked as a puppet. Special super reflective makeup was used to show the effect of a Cybermat bite. Shining a pink light at the actor made the makeup show up brightly, like pulsing veins. 2011. The cool new Cybermats look scarier than before, with rows of nasty sharp teeth. One design also includes a very long tail. The design team made lots of Cybermat props. This one has its mouth closed and has red lights at the back. There are wires in the side of this Cybermat to make its mouth light up. In the shot, actor James Corden hides the wires with his hand. James rolls about on the floor with the prop. It's his acting that makes us think the Cybermat is real and scary. Fast fact. Cybermats have appeared in four Doctor Who stories. The Tomb of the Cybermen in 1967, The Wheel in Space in 1968, and Revenge of the Cybermen in 1975, and Closing Time in 2011. Then we have the Doctor... Do as the she the Seven Peter's puppy. That's the Seven page, all the signs are. Then we have the Doctor Doctor page. Dear Doctor, if you were in a room with an unbeatable silence and your TARDIS and sonic screwdriver had disappeared, what would you do? The Doctor replies, who said the silence were unbeatable? I distinctly remember someone saying silence will fall, though I suppose that could have meant they were about to trip over, and I wouldn't want to be underneath one when they do. Big guys, those silence. First thing I wouldn't do is blink. Works as well against the silence as it does against the weeping angels. Then I wouldn't panic. Then I'd ask them a tricky maths question, make my excuses and leave in a hurry. Dear Doctor, why did you leave Amy and Rory at their house without you in the God Complex? The doctor replies, If I'd stayed, it would have ruined the surprise. Well, surprises. Before I handed over the keys, I'd kitted the place out. Improved it. Normal houses are really dull without extras. They can't even dematerialise. I thought the ponds might get bored, so I fitted a helter skelter instead of a staircase. A bit of a pain at bedtime, but a lot of fun in the morning. And you should see what I did to the bathroom. Less bath, less room, more ocean. Dear Doctor, I'm writing to say that I have a weird question to ask. Why is the TARDIS so small on the outside and big on the inside? Confusing. The Doctor replies, It would be pretty rubbish if it was the other way around. If it was smaller on the inside, where would I swing a cat? If I had a cat, that is, and were inclined to swing one, which I'm not. Cat swinging is illegal in almost every time zone, and I frown upon it with my most frowny frown. All you have to remember is that the outside of the TARDIS is averagely small, but the inside is very far away. Then it all makes perfect sense. Aye, aye, Kabarian tells it like it is. Dear Madam K, if you had to be any monster, what would it be and why? Please reply or you know who I'll tell. Madam K replies, I would be a monoid, a monster that was met by the first Doctor a very long time ago. Although there is one potential hitch, they only have one eye, so my eye drive could be a bit of a problem. And the mono is saying, is there anybody else with it? So, that's Dr. Dr. Page. And I have upload page with lots of cool art and collections and dressing up. And a real dark. Yay! Those are cool stuff. Now we have a poster of a silent and the doctor with his eye drive on. Then we have the puzzle page. And the ultimate Dalek collection. Dalek strategist. First seen in the 11th Doctor Adventure, Victory of the Daleks, 2010. This Dalek was created by the progenitor and is a pure DNA Dalek so it is very big and powerful. The strategist is tactical and controls the Dalek drones during battles. 
Then next week we have a Dalek money box. See, that looks really cool. And the he said is, oh, don't get sentimental. It's just a robot. Find out next week. And last week's answer was the Doctor in the God Complex. So that's the magazine and gift for this week. I hope you have enjoyed this video and thank you for watching.